Hello my marvelous muses. How we doing tonight guys? So tonight we're gonna do kind of a little two-for-one special here. Um, I'm actually gonna do the little Frenchie. Um, my friend's dog, he has a black muzzle right here. This perfume is black and the rest of him is kind of a kind of a tan color. So what I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of white and then I'm just going to put a drop of brown in it, mix it up, make kind of a tan color. I am going to take some black mica powder and see if I can reach down in here and just dust this little part right here with black mica powder. I'm also, since I'm going to be doing white for this, I'm going to take a little bit of the white after I mix it up before I add the tan to it. And I'm going to do the penguin. I am going to try to take the same black mica powder and I'm going to try to dust his little black wings and maybe the orange in his beak and his feet. I don't know. And then, uh, I don't know. I'll see if I have any more resin left when I do a couple more of these. Now, somebody had asked me about using, uh, why I wasn't using the curing machine. When you do a deeper mold, for whatever reason, resin when you pour it deeper as a thermo can't think of the word it's a heat it heats up the deeper you pour it this is the same thing the curing machine does for it it heats up these thinner ones and makes them cure faster this mold right here i could pour this mold and i could pour a flat mold with the same amount of resin and the flat mold, if I poured like a flat round tray, would not heat up because of the depth of it. Even though it's the same amount of resin as this, this might, this is probably going to take, I had to guess, I'm going to guess about two ounces, maybe three ounces of resin, about three ounces of resin, which is the same as a coaster. If I put that three ounces of resin in a coaster, it's not going to get hot. I can put it in a curing machine, cure it in three hours, boom, done, coaster finished. This, when I put that same amount of resin in here because it's in a smaller area and deeper, this is going to get hot. And if I put that in the curing machine, it could cause this to overheat. Now, if I wanted to put it in there and say I was pouring a really deep, deep, deep mold. And I'm using regular resin. I'm not using the deep pour resin. I'm using just my regular Let's resin. You could pour, you could pour a mold. 30 inches thick, but you've got to do it in 2 inch layers, maybe 3 inch, you might be able to pull off 3 inch layers, but 2 inch layers, so you do small layers on top of small layers, on top of small layers, on top of small layers, and you could pour a deep mold, no problem, would that be a pain in the butt, yes, and you learn your resin after a while, you learn the limitations to what you could pour with that resin, and what, it's going to get too hot, I have my clip-on fan. Uh, if I pour a mold that I think is going to get really warm, I put the fan on it and blow it right at the mold to keep it from overheating. Because if not, you could actually ruin your molds. So that's why I didn't put the mushroom house in the curing machine. Because that's pretty deep right there. And that. The base. So if I would have put that in the curing machine, and this mold's not a thick mold, it probably would have fused the mold to it. That's why I didn't do it. Now, if I would have poured this half full and then came back later and poured the other half, yeah, I could have put it in there. And it would have been totally fine and it would have cured in three hours. But when I filled it completely full, it cured in three hours without the machine. Hope that helps. Because somebody had asked me about that and I I wanted to be I wanted to be be sure I was letting you guys know what was up with that. That's why that's why that's that way. There we go. <laughs> All right. Black resin. I mean black resin. Black mica powder here. And we are going to take... Uh, probably going to use my little brush. I'm 
We're just gonna stick our little brush down in here. Okay, we're gonna move him out of the way for a second. Alright, we're gonna get it far enough down in there. <laughs> I'm just going to make a little extra resin and we're going to pour this little guy too. And this I will put in the curing machine. I will not put the Frenchie in because he is a deep mold. And I am pouring him all in one pour. But this one here will be put in the curing machine and it will be done in three hours and it will be getting hard. Otherwise this one little mold would take longer than that. Which is weird. I know it's like opposite of what you think it would be. You're like, oh, the, skin, the thinner mold would cure faster. No. It's actually the opposite. For whatever reason, I don't know. It's something, like I said, it's a chemical reaction to the resin. They're so cute. I kind of want to pour some more of these. We're going to do two tonight, though. But we'll do some more. Definitely, because I'd love to do these. Frog and a little lizard. Alright, we're going to dump this out. Oh, I didn't see here. I missed some. Oh, and I want to say thank you to April and the person that bought me the gloves and the stuff the other day. I had James on there, but that's actually, it was actually April that bought it. Uh, and she bought me some UV resin damming tape. I'm so excited to try this. So excited for this. Um, I've used packing tape for so long and I've seen people use this and this Packing tape works okay, but this works so much better. So I have those open back bezels that I was dying to try. I've got a bunch of those little wooden things. And I've got the little micro bottle tip bottles now that I can use with it. So we're going to be trying a bunch of UV resin projects here in the next few days. Got a couple others that are coming ahead of it, but definitely this next week we will have be having UV resin videos. A couple of them anyway. All right. I'm going to get this excess mica powder out of the center here. Okay, now I want a little bit of orange. We're going to do his beak in some orange there.
that's a black one. Why did I do that? I didn't think far away. Thank heavens. So now, all right. Here it goes. We're gonna try this, okay? His little nose is down here in the tip. Kind of hard to get down in here. We're going to get it as close as we can. I still think it needs to come down a little bit farther here in his little chin. In his little chin. So my, you can see right here, this is the area I'm trying to get in right there. Alright, gonna have to work. Close enough, she's gonna know it was meant to be, meant to be him. She's gonna know. Hopefully. Yeah, this is for one friend and this is for another. <laughs> so, my friend, get the hook up. Hey, get the hook up. So, I've got one friend's project that's kicking my butt. The, the chairs are still kicking my butt. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put you guys on a pause. I'm going to mix up some resin. I'm going to get my resin cure machine over here. We're going to get this pouring going. Pouring, blah, 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 blah. pouring going. There we go. Be right back, guys. Okay, guys, we're back. Alright, so I got my resin here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white in this one over here. This is going to be for the penguin. Poured it in a smaller cup because I was going to like, I'm going to mix this brown. But if I don't use all this white, I can pour it in with the brown. Hmm. I just want it to be just a tad bit darker. I want it to be a little bit more opaque. Alright. Let's put that right there for a minute because we're going to use that in the tan. How are we doing tonight guys everybody having a good night so i went to my first doctor's appointment today i'm going next thursday a week from today for a chest x-ray and then um, 
because I haven't been to a doctor in so long. I'm having all kinds of screening done that I haven't had done in years. I've got to go in Monday and have my blood work done. Uh, two, no, Thursday I'm going to get the chest x-ray and then uh, they're going to set me up an appointment for a mammogram and a pap smear. So, I hate mammograms. So bad. I hate them so bad. So, 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 so bad. I can't lie. I'm not fond of pap smear either, but... So, yay. Should have seen the look on the doctor's face when he asked me... So why are you here today? This is the first time I've ever seen this doctor, right? He says, why are you here today? I said, uh, well, I guess a checkup. And he said, oh, so I said, yeah. I said, I'll be honest with you. I said, I haven't, I haven't had a primary doctor in over 30 years. The look on his face. He never said a word. But the look on his face. It was like I was being scolded without him ever saying anything. <laughs> he never, the man never said a word. Didn't say anything bad. But I could feel the judgment. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, he just kind of shook his head and was like, uh, like really lady, 30 years. But for years, I didn't, there was no reason. I'm not a, I'm not one of these people. I'm not going to go to the doctor if I'm not sick. I'm not just going to go in and go, oh, let me look for something wrong with me. Not that person. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. And then the last few years that my husband was alive. Well, when my husband was alive, we spent so much time. My husband was a type 2 diabetic. Insulin dependent. Type 1, I don't know. I never knew what he was, actually, because he was insulin dependent, but he didn't become insulin dependent until he was in his early 20s. But they think maybe he was just misdiagnosed his whole life, and nobody ever realized it when he was a kid. Because diabetes ran in his family. His mother was a diabetic. And uh, for years, his blood sugar was so out of control. And I mean, doctors would be like, oh, we're going to get this under control for you. We would go in. They'd put him on something. Literally the same meal, the same everything. One day, his blood sugar would be... Uh, I've, seen it as, I, I've seen it as high. His meters wouldn't read any higher than 600. And I've seen it over 600 where the meter just said high. And when we went into the emergency room, uh, they did blood tests. And ended up coming back, and it ended up being, what did they say it was? It was over a 1,000. So they immediately started him on an insulin drip at that point. Uh, and I have seen him in the hospital where they came in, and they told him how much insulin they were giving him. And he tried to tell them, that's going to be too much. And they're like, oh, no, 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 your blood sugar is 300-something. You need X amount of insulin. And they came in and they gave him that amount of insulin and within about an hour and a half the nurse was freaking out because they came in and checked his blood sugar and his blood sugar was 28. And I mean they were freaking out because that's very, if you know diabetes, it's comatose slow. And I have seen him that way a couple times over the years. Which just blew the doctor's mind because technically at that point he should have been in a coma he shouldn't have ended up talking to him telling him what he needed <laughs> etc so it was very we dealt with a lot of medical issues with him needless to say so I never it wasn't like I there was no reason for me to feel like I needed to go to the doctor I didn't feel sick or anything so I spent so much time in the doctors with him, I wasn't trying to go myself if I didn't have to. And I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. So 
But yeah, it just we spent so much time trying to take care of that over the years. But so much misinformation at first. I don't know if it was misinformation as they just maybe they didn't know as much back when we first when I first got with him and we st were dealing with this. They didn't have half the stuff and know half the stuff that they know now. Hmm. I think it needs to be a little darker. I feel like he's kind of, I don't know, he's not not a whole lot darker. Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm going to do just a teeny, teeny bit here. Alright, it's going to have to match him. It's going to be close enough. Like I said, she's going to know it's her doggy. She better know it anyway. have saved some resin just in case I needed it for this. Huh. Wow. Well, this is like, couldn't be any better. <laughs> That's like almost perfect here. That's funny. All right. So I have a little bit of resin left. So it looks like we're going to do some of these other little creatures in this one. Teeny tiny bit here I need to add to it. There we go. Alright. So. Now. I have a little lizard and a little frog. Don't know if I have enough to do both. But I will do one for sure. I'm going to use one of these little cups here. Actually got enough. I could do two of these little cups. So we're going to do one. And we're going to do some of, my, some of our pretty glitter. How about glitter? Uh, let's do the frog. And let's do... Want to do some green in him? Yeah, let's do some green. What do you think? Green glitter.
Well, that was like perfect. <laughs> These little cups are like perfect for those. That's funny. Super funny there. <laughs> All right. Cute. Right. Super cute. All right, rather than waste that cup here, I'm just going to use this same cup over again. And I'm going to fill her back up. I might be able to do another one. All right. So we are going to do... What do we want to do now? Okay, I did... Chunky green. Let's do, let's do some really fine iridescent blue. What do we think? Oh my god, that color is so gorgeous. Okay, we're loading him up. <laughs> Glitz and glitter by Michelle. Michelle Glitz, Glitz and glitter by Michelle. Yeah, I was anyway. I watched her video the other day where she put all the stuff into the uh, bottle openers, and she's kind of like me. She likes her glitter, and she didn't put any glitter in it. And I was like, Oh my god, I can't believe you didn't put any glitter in it. <laughs> she said it wasn't easy. She was so tempted to. She put rocks and she put shells and she put sand and but no glitter. And I was like, oh my god, that's in her name. She looks like she'd be so much fun just to hang out with. She goes skydiving. I want to go skydiving so bad. She went skydiving. I'm like, oh my god. I love her videos that she shows. I guess I had to show more of my Florida life. Of course, I don't really get to live the Florida life because I don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. Oh, that is pretty. That's pretty, guys. Oh, my God. Okay. Now, I'm just going to leave. There's a tiny bit in here. I'm just going to leave that in here. And we're going to do one more. We are going to do one more here. April, I'm wearing my gloves. <laughs> Thank you. I'm wearing my new gloves. They fit so much better. It's amazing when you get a pair of gloves that fit. When you get these gloves that are like too big or too small. Too small. I mean, the others weren't really too small. They were just so hard to get off when your hands got sweaty. And it was just... It was horrible, so that was why I wasn't wearing them, and I started wearing the clear ones, but they're so big, they're hard to work with, you can't, can't pick anything up hardly, you can't move anything. Alright, so, we have two birds, a chipmunk, a snail, okay, I'm thinking that's a squirrel, not a chipmunk, two birds, and, and I've already got a little bit of blue glitter in here, so I'm thinking...
thinking maybe something with blue or we want to do like a white iridescent and do the snail hmm yeah we'll do the white if I wouldn't have put the blue glitter in, I would have probably put, tried my new red out and made the one bird a cardinal. But I'd already put the, mixed in with the blue glitter. So, but next time, definitely make some cardinals. I'm sending them to my friends in Kentucky. Send them to my friends in Louisville. Make them cardinal keychains. Do the snail here. <laughs> How perfect is this, guys? All right, let me get my micro brush out, make sure it's up in that corner. Oh, it's already up there. I can see it. I was going to say I want to make sure it was up here and it was all still there. His is all in here. And his toes. And his toes. Looks like everybody's good. Everybody is good to go, guys. Alright, I'm going to give everything a quick spritz here of alcohol. Just to make sure we don't have any bubbles. I, don't, I love to look when you spray the alcohol on the glitter. It makes the glitter sparkle even more. Alright. I'm going to take my gloves off here. I'm going to put my cure machine on because I've got junk on my gloves. I want it all over my machine. See, I can already feel this mold getting warm. The Frenchie. Yeah, I can feel him getting warm already. Alright, guys. We'll be back tomorrow night for demolding. Bye. Hey guys, we're back. It's demolding time. Oh. It is demolding time. We love that time of night. Oh. Alright, so I got another Amazon package today. A gift. And it is chameleon mica powders and I am in love in love with these names the colors look amazing so far uh, this gift is from Audrey thank you very much Audrey I appreciate it look at these colors okay so we have forest king let me turn my flash on so it does it some justice here guys there we go so Forest King, the names of these are Ocean Amethyst. Uh, how do you get a job naming colors of chameleon powder? Magnolia Sunset. Got Lilac Navy. Cobalt Violet. One of these is leaking color, but look at that color, guys. The chameleon in it is gorgeous. 
Merry Dancers. Look at the colors. These are pretty. Peacock Blue. Kind of a purplish blue, it looks like. Chocolate Plum. These are pretty. Living Earth. Spicy Cocktail. <laughs> what a name, huh? Spicy Cocktail. I'm like, wow. I love the names, guys. Mermaid's Eyes. Isn't that beautiful? Interference Blue. Which kind of confuses me because I thought the interference was supposed to be white. And look blue later. But this one's called Interference Blue. We did the Forest King. We did the Ocean Amethyst. So here we go. Snow Queen. This is a blue. Kind of blue, green, purple. I don't know. Carmine Red. Haldi Brown. And Galaxy Purple. So beautiful. My God, those are gorgeous. I can't wait. I can't wait. Probably going to do the owl next and this. Some of these are probably going to get used in the owl. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I've got another mold. Let me show you this other mold right quick. I just got. And I blame. 100% blame Wanda. At Wanda's Blessed Creations. This is all her fault. This is all her fault. All her fault. 100%. I have an outdoor security camera now and I've got it set weird and I don't like it now that I change it. It's set to say hello. If it detects something. Unfortunately that also means if it detects a lizard running across. Look at this mold. Guys, look at this mold. Can you see this mold? I don't think you can see it up close. Okay, so it comes with two clock parts. The hands, everything you need. Battery operated clock. And it is one of the old fashioned bicycles with the little wheel in the back and the big wheel on the front. Look at the gears in it. I totally want to put my hat. I got some right over here by me. Right over here beside me. I'm going to put some of them in it. I totally want to make this clock and I want to put more of these in here. I want to brush these with mica powder. Aren't these cool? Okay, that's going to drive me bonkers. Can you guys hear that? Hello, welcome. Okay. I'm going to put you guys on a quick pause. I'm going to fix that camera so it doesn't keep saying that. I'll be right back. Alright guys, we're back. Sorry about that. I had to fix that. It was driving me crazy. So, that's what I want to do to this. What do you think? What do you think, guys? I've got more of these gears too, so I think I'm, I'm going to get a bunch of these out maybe. Oh, those would fit right there in the middle. Oh my gosh. Yeah, something like that anyway. But I blame Wanda. This is her fault, I think. Okay, Wanda and Claire. Claire got on this steampunk kick, and I, I absolutely love steampunk. And when she got on that kick, it was like, I've been jonesing to do steampunk on something. So, it's their fault, guys. 
It's totally their fault. We'll blame it on them, right? Wouldn't be because I have a mold addiction. Not at all. So, I was talking to one of my subscribers today. and She had mentioned that she was having issues being able to add something other than to buy me something off of Amazon and have it shipped to me rather than just what I pick. So, I, me and my grandson played around with it and we figured out how to do it today. What you have to do is you have to go in and you click on my Amazon wish list, pick any item, put it in, add it to the cart. Go in like you're going to check out. Click on my address that you want it sent to me. Then go back, click your back button, go back like you're going to keep shopping. Pick something else that you, what you actually want to buy. Go into search, find whatever you want, whatever you really want to send me. Go back in, make sure everything's showing, still going to my address. Then you can back out one more time and you can click to take the item off my, the item that was from my wish list, you can take it out of the cart at that point. And it'll still send the item that you were wanting to send me to me. If that doesn't work and it's too big of a pain and you want to send me something, email me guys. My email is marvelousartsy at gmail.com. It's in the description box. Just email me. I'll send you my address. You can send it to me that way. I don't care. I appreciate it so much, guys. I appreciate everything everybody's done. All the super chats. All the copies. I appreciate that so much. Um, I am fixing to hopefully, here in the next week or so, get my first money from YouTube. Just so you know, I don't know if anybody's ever talked about this before. But I have been monetized for a month. Okay, I had been monetized for a month. They go by month from month to month. I had been monetized for almost one month exactly. And for my first month monetization with a little over a thousand subscribers, I ended up making $200 off of YouTube. And that was with super chats that you guys gave because those go through YouTube. When you do the PayPal, it goes directly to my PayPal. No YouTube involved there. But those go, anytime you do a super chat or a super thanks or anything like that, it goes through YouTube to do it. And then the more channel, the more views you get, the longer people watch your videos, etc. Uh, that equates into more money. Well, my channel is slowly growing a little bit more and more now. And as of right now, it's almost the middle of the month and I'm at over 110 this month so far. So, uh... They deposit it, they tally it up about the 8th, 9th of the month, somewhere around in there. And then it goes into what they call your Google AdSense account. And from there, then it, the, toward the end of the month, they, depending on how you choose to have the money sent to you, you have it direct deposited into your bank account or you can have it mailed to you. Uh, I have it direct deposited into my bank account, so the end of the month it will be direct deposited in there so i will see how that works out i haven't got the first deposit yet but it is two hundred dollars is what it is so that lets you know nobody's getting rich off youtube unless you have a lot of subscribers if you have a lot of subscribers and you're getting twenty thousand views per video you're probably making pretty decent money maybe not enough for some people to live off of but i'm on disability so this little bit of extra money a month will help me greatly it helps me buy my supplies that i need Helps me with my Timu orders. <laughs> and, uh, which God knows I have a Timu addiction. Alright. So enough of that, guys. I just wanted to talk on that. I don't know if anybody had ever mentioned that. if Because I know some of you guys are monetized or are close to getting monetized. And I just kind of wanted to go over, you know, what what's happening there. Alright, so before we take this little guy out, I want to take this out. So we have our little penguin here. We did him in black mica powder with a little bit of orange in his beak and a little bit of orange in his feet. He's pretty cute there. I kind of wish this line was a little more pronounced. It's still not bad though. I really think he's cute. And if I wanted to, I could actually just go in here with my white acrylic pen. And color just this section right here back in white, which is what I might end up doing. Yeah, I may do that. And then this. It's my friend's dog next door. <laughs> Let's 
to Shasta. Pretty cute. And then we've got glitter stuff here, guys. Look at this. This is this lizard. Look at him. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Look at that glitter. Oh my gosh, guys, you gotta see this. Look at this glitter. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Wow. I could just sit and look at that all day long. This green. Guys, these glitters. I can't get over these. And these aren't like crazy expensive glitters. These are, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're nice glitter, but oh my God. Look at that. It just sparkles. I'm just sitting there looking at it. It's just like twinkling. Wow. And then this one here. A little snail. Isn't it pretty? Oh my gosh, these are gorgeous. So these are supposed to be key rings. Um... This I'm going to make into a magnet for my friend. This one is going to be a key ring. So, I think what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and demold this guy. But then I got, thanks to Angel, I now have a Dremel. And I think we might drill a hole in here for his little, um, Oh my god, O-ring thing. Anyway, it screws in. <laughs> Can't think what it's called now. O-ring. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, that. We'll, we'll do that after we demold the little doggy here. So we're just going to pull this away from here. Like so. And I can imagine this might be a little difficult to get loose. All right, so we're gonna spring, spray some water down in here. All right, let me get this out here a little bit. Spray some more water down in there. Let's see if we can get his little booty out here. All right. Okay, we got him close here. Got him close. Now we just need to get his little head out here. Almost there. Almost there. I've got the water running out of my hand here. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at this little guy. Oh, wow. He got a little mica powder where I didn't want mica powder. But, and I think what I'm going to do next time when I make him, because I will be making him again, probably. I think what I'll do next time when I make him is I think I'm going to I think I'm just going to pour him one color and then color his little muzzle after the fact. I'll color this after everything else is done. Oh my gosh, she's too cute. We got to color his eyes in though. We got to color his little eyes in, guys. So I go in tomorrow to get my eyes checked for glasses. And I'm so weird. I'm 
I totally want if they have them which if I can get them I'm gonna get them but if not I'll take the closest thing to them I totally want John Lennon glasses the round ones I love them I love them love them love them I have a couple pairs of the reading glasses that I bought off of Amazon that are like that love them and uh yeah, I want my John Lennon re want my John Lennon frames. Worst case scenario, if they don't have the wire frame ones, I will take the Harry Potter round. <laughs> I know I'm strange. I know I'm strange, but that's all right. You guys like me anyway. All right, so we're gonna color his little nose in pink here. There we go. Just so his nose is a little different than the rest of him. But yeah, I wish now, like I said, I would, because I, it's so hard to brush that mica powder down there and, I, and just get that one spot, because you can't tell what you're getting. So he ended up with a little bit of color back here, which is fine. It's pretty cute, though. Pretty darn cute, guys, I have to say. All right. Now, I'm gonna plug in this thing here. Plug in the Dremel. Alright. Put in that right there. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna use this little bitty one here. Okay, so we gotta take this off. And we gotta put a smaller one in. Take a little bitty drill bit. Put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. My reading glasses. Fine tip. Let's see. Yep, that'll be it right there. Okay. this in and then we're going to tighten it down look at there Perfect. Get that right in the center like we need it to be. Uh, let's see. I think I want to do... We're going to do this little guy here. Sit him up on top of this one. And then we'll do the little 
froggy. Alright Angel, that was like 5 million trillion times easier than it ever was before. Just so you know. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. These to be good and snug because they're keychains. I will probably also UV resin. Oh, this is perfect. Look at there. Isn't that perfect? Okay, get this one out. Right. I'm gonna get one more. I didn't do this snail. I think I'm gonna make him another magnet. so cute. All right, look at this. <laughs> and then it's just as simple as looking on your keychain. this. And we're going to run our little hoop through there. And we're going to do it right here. Oh, we got the train. Got the train, guys. Just had the pliers and I said, what did I do with my pliers? Oh, maybe it's in here. There's that. And what did I do with my pliers? Okay. Anyway, you don't need to see me squeeze pliers together. I can't do it with my fingers. These are too tough. But yeah, we're gonna... All I gotta do is squeeze that together. And we'll put these on. And they will look like this. Now this one is very smooth, so I don't really need to trim anything off of it. 
Same thing with him. He's just slightly, just slightly, slightly. So we'll just take a deburring tool here. There we go. All right, so I think I'm gonna try to fix this one though. I think we're gonna try to fix this. I have to put a couple coats on. And what I can do afterwards is I can either UV resin it or I can take a, some clear spray varnish and just spray a thin coat over the top of it to help seal it in. do the side here black all right I'm just gonna make this look a little darker here Okay, so we want the feet to be orange, so we're not going to color that in black. That side already looks pretty good. I just didn't get the side of it good enough. And I think what I might do next time, I think I might brush the center with some white mica powder first. Then when I do the black, it won't matter if I get any black on here because already going to be covered with white so it won't matter anyway i think that's what we're going to do all right guys so we have let me zoom this back out here it's too far in somebody's going to tell me it looked horrible all right there's our penguin our sparkly frog beautiful Gorgeous, gorgeous lizard. Oh, he's so pretty, man. I tell you, this is probably my favorite so far. I love this blue, though. I love any of these blues. I, I could see this being in a turtle. Yeah. That one there. The doggy doggy. And, of course, this little guy. I think I need to do his back though, his bottom here.
There we go. Pretty darn cute. It really is. It's a very cute little mold. Alright guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, perfect time to do so. We make all kinds of cool stuff here. Uh, if you've like I said, I want to thank anyone who's donated to my PayPal, who's bought me a coffee, who's bought anything off my Amazon wish list. If you've used my link in Timu or the washi tape shop to purchase anything, I appreciate that as well. Um, I also, uh, my brain's not working right now, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I got a lot going on, turning around in here. Um, I hope everybody's rosin cures beautifully. Hope you guys are happy, healthy, safe, and blessed. Hope your craft projects turn out amazing. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Bye.